he's making his closing argument. He says, uh, but another thing is that Doug Jones is well-respected. He knows government better. He's got friends in Washington. And guys, uh, if Joe Biden wins election, then that means that he is going to be in with the president. He'll know the president. And they'll be able to get a lot done. I'm like, I literally don't want them to do anything. We don't want that. We want Joe Biden's hands tied. Mm -hmm. Like, frankly... I'm the kind of guy that just gridlock is my favorite form of government. But even if I weren't, like, I wouldn't want the agenda of Joe Biden and Doug Jones to get through. I mean, Alabama voted against Joe Biden. Why? Because we don't want his agenda. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is how stupid this is. This is like if I went to the bluest part of Washington, the state, and was like, guys, you got to vote for my friend here. Because you know why? Trump loves this guy. I mean, he and Trump are like this. Mm -hmm. Like, that wouldn't appeal to people in Washington. No. (laughs) That's a blue state. All levels. Stupid. Uh, Josh Moon, you know, he needs to win Stupidest Person of the Year at some point. Hey there, fellow tacticians. Don't forget to like and subscribe and ring that little notification bell because the more likes and subscriptions I get, the more people see my conservative content which will make America a better place and angers the dark cyber overlords at YouTube. That was stupid. I know it was stupid. Really stupid. Hey, I just said it was stupid. Well, guys, this is our big daily dose of stupid roundup. So what we do is we we put together everything. So this is going to be the yearly dose of stupid. Uh, This is, we're going to do enough stupid in this one segment to keep you tied over until next Festivus. So we're going to try... <laughs> right, there, there's going to be a lot of stupid in there's this. There's a lot of stupid. Lots of stupid. There's a lot of stupid in the world, and that's why... I know. That's why we do it this way. So what we're going to do is we're going to be counting down the top five for our daily doses of stupid. And these are all things that I've done a daily dose of stupid for over the year. And then we are going to be revealing who is our winner of stupidest person of the year. So we've got a lot to pack into this little Daily Dose of Stupid, but first, we are going to start with our Honorable Mentions. Honorable Mention. All right, so I had a couple of Honorable Mentions, and I thought that these were just freaking hilarious. Oh, yeah. Uh, My favorite. Democrats discovered federalism this year. I mean, it's beautiful. Like, I'm glad, but I wish they'd be consistent about it. Oh, they've already forgotten it now, because that was several months ago. This was a Daily Dose of Stupid, I want to say, back in July or August. Yeah. Yeah, so what was going on at the time, because, like I said, these are all past Daily Dose of Stupid segments we did at one point in this year. Um, This particular one, as you may recall, when a lot of states were talking about mask mandates and and everyone was talking about, we need to get Trump to institute a national mass mandate, and we need him to do na- nationwide shutdowns and, and all of this stuff. And then all of a sudden, everybody on the left started saying, well, wait a second, we've got a lot of blue states, and there's a lot of uh, blue state legislatures and blue governors. We could just shut things down on a state-by-state level, guys. We could do that. And I was just like, <laughs> we've literally been arguing this for 200 years. Yep. But that was that was one of my honorable mentions. Laura, you had one? Yeah, um, so John Roberts arguing with himself. <laughs> that was pretty funny. That was just, I'm sorry, that was stupid. Yeah. And you achieved, you achieved justice. Yeah. Stop being stupid. So for those of you who may not remember what happened there, uh, the Chief Justice, John Roberts, was literally making the opposite argument that he did on a couple of different issues. But I think this, oh, yeah. w- this one specifically... Um, had to do with, uh, was this one the Obamacare decision where he, yeah. like, reversed? Yeah, okay. I was just making sure, because this was your honorable mention. It was great. Yeah, so um, he reversed his decision on the, he was literally arguing against two years ago John Roberts. <laughs> he was arguing that he was wrong two years ago and flip-flopped. He actually joined the opposing side. Oh, yeah. 
I'm like, dude, you, you missed your chance to do the right thing on that. It's absolutely astounding. John Roberts, I mean, his opinion changes with whatever direction the wind is blowing. It's, you know, a lot of times the way he operates is, you know, he, he's trying to figure out, is the court going to be subject to criticism? And if the answer is yes, then he forms his opinion based around that, rather than trying to stay logically consistent, which is really what a justice is supposed to do. Well, I agree. And, and that's kind of the, the really disheartening thing about Chief Justice Roberts is, the whole point of having the Supreme Court is to solve contentious issues. Yep. I mean, if it was just issues everybody agreed on, then we wouldn't need a court. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it just astounds me that, like, the, the, the ones that he's not reliable on are the ones that are contentious and are high, you know, high tension and he doesn't want to upset the apple cart, which inevitably results in him upsetting the apple cart. Mm -hmm. Or, but, like, if you call him out as stupid, then he's like... You know what? I'm just going to distinguish why I was still right. What was that recent case he did that in? Oh, what, what, what was that one? That was a recent one. That wasn't. Yeah, what, it was really that recent. Wasn't this it was talking about Jacobson. Stupid. Yeah, yeah, that was a uh, the, the, that was uh, Roman Catholic Diocese of Brooklyn. Um, yeah, so it was like one of yeah. those where like they shut down, you know, religious services, and the Catholic Church sued over it. New York. Right, Matt and I did a segment yeah. on that not too long yeah. ago. Yeah, and so John Roberts is like, I wasn't wrong then, and I wasn't relying on that, but it totally was, but it kind of wasn't. Yep, he totally but was. But you were, dude. Like, everybody can read. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I've got one more honorable mention that I just had to bring up, even though it didn't make our top five. Uh, <laughs> the Montgomery Occupational Tax. <sighs> I mean, the levels of stupid that this thing reaches. Whole in fact, Laura and I didn't necessarily think this one should be in the top five, so it didn't wind up in it. But I had to mention this one because, guys, what happens when you tax something? Anything, regardless of what it is. It discourages people from doing it. Mm -hmm. You just put a tax on hiring people. Morons. <laughs> I don't. There's not so a general way to put that. When just goes up here, you'll know why. Right. Uh, it's. I mean, there's a lot of dumb taxes out there. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. I, there, m there are far more dumb taxes than there are good taxes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the occupational tax may be the dumbest tax of all of them. <laughs> the oh, fact gosh. that we you would actually tax somebody for hiring people. In your city. Oh, yeah. Like, is there anything that would be more discouraging of people working in your city or wanting to build a business here? Like, <laughs> it's like, why is everybody leaving for Prattville with Tumka or Pike Road? I can't figure it out. Gee. Yeah. Couldn't be the tax rates or the terrible school system. <sighs> mm -hmm. I, I love my, my hometown. I love the river region. But sometimes, like, the stupidity of Mon people in Montgomery just it, it drives me up a wall. And, and I know that's that, why we get out of here. <laughs> Anybody want a house? I know there's good, smart people here. I, you know, I like to think I'm one of them. I, the people I go to church with, everything. There are good people in Montgomery. Don't yeah. get me wrong. Mm -hmm. But there's some stupid people in Montgomery. <laughs> and, and they're all in the government. Most of them yes. are. Yes. <laughs> all right. So let's actually go on to our list, and we'll start with number five. Yep. 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 Number five. Okay, so our number five for this year for the stupidest of the Daily Dose of Stupid was Joe Biden telling everybody to believe women just a couple months before allegations yeah. of him raping someone came out and then and immediately like, going like, that no, woman. don't believe that woman. Yeah. I mean, believe all women, but don't believe that woman. But I no, I meant what I said when I said believe all women. I just didn't mean all women or believing them. Yeah, oh yeah. Like, poor Tara Reid. Having to, <laughs> oh my gosh. I mean, every other per, every other woman that's set forward and say, yeah, he raped me, even if it's not true, was listened to. And Tara reads back here like, dude, he's becoming president. He totally raped me. Like, what right, and that's on? the thing. There's not a lot of evidence on this. Yeah. It, it's yeah. very possible that she's making all this crap up and mm -hmm. there, there's no truth to it. It's also it's possible. possible that it's real. Yeah. But, like, the, it's given less weight than those other women that stepped forward who had even less evidence. Right, and that, that's my issue with it. Like, people here remember the Roy Moore thing vividly. Mm -hmm. And there was, again, not much evidence to th that backed up what Tara Reid was saying, but it was substantially more than Roy Moore. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was substantially more than the allegations with Donald Trump. Brett oh, Kavanaugh. Yeah. Uh, Brett oh, Ka Rick Kavanaugh. Way more than Brett Kavanaugh. Thing. There was nothing with Kavanaugh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but that's the thing that irritated people about that. Not even necessarily the story itself. It's just the blatant hypocrisy and the double standard of the left immediately saying, well, you have to believe all women and these people should be taken seriously. And you're a, you're a sexist for even suggesting that we should hear out the evidence as opposed to just believing them automatically. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. And then the second that it came out that the guy that they were running for president, they were like, 
uh, we we really want to investigate this, and she could be lying. We don't... Mm-hmm. I mean, just out the window. It's total hypocrisy at the left, but it's real stupid. Right. This is another one that didn't make the list, but it was another Daily Dose of Stupid I did when Alyssa Milano evolved on Believe All Women as a Mm -hmm. big leader of the Me Too movement. Yet, she's one of the ones uh, dressed up and screaming at Brett Kavanaugh, calling him a gang rapist. Oh, yeah. But but Joe Biden, no, we've got to stop back and, and take a look at that. And, you know, we don't know. That could be wrong. Yeah, did anybody actually ask her if she should reverse her position on Kavanaugh? Mm. And I, I, my favorite <laughs> thing... evolved on that? My favorite thing was that radio interview where she goes on with uh, with that guy and she's like, look, um, I, I think that women should be believed, but they should also be investigated. Oh, so you mean it's treat like, women like humans. I was like, <laughs> yeah. wait, wait, wait. So literally what every conservative was calling for in the Brett Kavanaugh thing. Bingo. And like every allegation sense. Like, no. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. Well, I mean, that's the thing. It just, it revealed the utter hypocrisy that they only want to believe all women when they think it helps them politically. Yeah, that's That's basically true for everything they do. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's go ahead and go to number four. Number four. Now, number four on this list... (laughs) This actually set a record. I don't know if you knew this, Laura. Did you see this particular segment? No, I didn't. Okay, so it's the shortest Daily Dose of Stupid we have ever done. Impressive. I did it in... I actually had a timer up in the the corner, and I was able to pull it off in 30 seconds. Wow. And that includes the clip and everything. So it was Chris Cuomo. This was when the BLM riots and everything was going on. And, uh, and this is another thing that I love, how they can't decide whether or not the protests were actually peaceful or they weren't peaceful, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> so this was when they were on the... Well, Either way, not, you can't get the Rona. Right. But, <laughs> but this was back when they were on the stance of, well, it's not peaceful, but it's okay that they're not peaceful. Yeah. And uh, this was Chris Cuomo coming on the air, and he goes, so explain to me, where is it written that protests are supposed to be civil and peaceful? <laughs> And literally all, I did, constitution. Right, literally all I did was play the clip, and then I said, here, and then pulled up a picture of the First Amendment. <laughs> the right of the people to peaceably assemble. Oh, wow, that must be hard, Chris yeah. Cuomo. <laughs> well, here's the thing. Anybody that believes Chris Cuomo either has read or cares about the Constitution is kidding themselves. Yeah, yeah. I would, I, in fact, I think anybody who believes that could be easily added to the Daily Dose of Stupid. Yeah, mm-hmm. indeed, indeed. Um... All right, let's go on and move on to number three. Number three. Number three on this list is a local story. Josh Moon writing an article trying to convince conservatives to vote for Doug Jones by bringing up a thing that conservatives hate. Yeah. <laughs> so it was so funny. That, like, there were... I, I don't have time to go over the whole list again, and if you want more details, just go back and watch it. It wasn't that long ago. Uh, just search for Josh Moon under the Daily Dose of Stupid. But this article, only Josh Moon could have done this. <laughs> yep. Jo- Josh Moon goes through an article, and basically his whole argument of why conservatives should vote for uh, Doug Jones is because it serves their wallets because now... You see, Doug Jones has been in the Senate for three years, Mm -hmm. so now he's entrenched, and he has friends in the Senate, and he's part of the swamp, and also he could bring back more money from the federal government. That's literally everything conservatives (laughs) hate. (laughs) We do not want that at all. It's like that great that scene in the office. Like, I mean, if you know me, I'm a huge office fan. Yeah. But where Pam is talking to Michael and she's like, Stop dating my mom and Michael's like, Well now I'm gonna date her even harder. <laughs> it's like, well now we're just gonna vote for a Tommy Tuberville even harder. Yep. Right. You, know. I, you guys know that I was kind of on the fence about Tommy Tuberville and I you know, he was Actually, my last choice in the Republican primary. Oh, we're, we feel the same way. That's how we felt about it. Right. And I, I still wound up voting for him because I, I think that he is a good man. I think that he's a moral person. Um, yeah, I mean, he's not Jones. And, and, <laughs> and, he's, and he, that's another thing, that he's not Doug Jones. Uh, but like after I read that article, I was like, dang, Moon makes a good point. Tommy Tuberville wouldn't be able to do any of that stuff since he's a, a, you know, a brand new senator. So like that's a, even more incentive for me to vote for Tuberville. <laughs> Josh Moon made me want to vote for Tuberville more writing yeah. that article. <laughs> 
<laughs> As he did for us all. I, yeah. I, I really can't figure out Josh Moon's whole style of, of writing. He's in a deep red state, and every time he tries to address conservatives, it's it, it, it's either something like that, that you know the, the logic just doesn't work and it backfires on him, or it's like a liberal flamethrowing piece. It's, it's, it, you know, he may as well mm -hmm. echo Hillary Clinton and call Alabamians deplorables. <laughs> and then it's like, oh, that, now that I've beat you up like that, will you please read my stuff? Just, you know, I, I think he's coming out with a new book called How to Win Friends and Influence People. That was going to be a bestseller. <laughs> well, the funny thing about that is, and, you know, your, your analogy there, Matt, isn't bad. It's just that at least Hillary Clinton doesn't, like, say that in front of a room full of people from Alabama. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Josh Moon does that. Yep. Know your audience, people. <laughs> know your audience. And here's here's the thing that I know you'll love about this, Laura. The clincher at the end of this, when he comes all, when he, like, brings all this to a head and, like, he's making his closing argument, he says, uh, but another thing is that Doug Jones is well-respected. He knows government better. He's got friends in Washington and guys... Uh, if Joe Biden wins election, then that means that he is going to be in with the president. He'll know the president. And they'll be able to get a lot done. I'm like, I literally don't want them to do anything. We don't want that. We want Joe Biden's hands tied. Mm -hmm. Like, frankly, I'm the kind of guy that just gridlock is my favorite form of government. But even oh, if I weren't, like, I wouldn't want the agenda of Joe Biden and Doug Jones to get through. I mean, Alabama voted against Joe Biden. Why? Right. Because we don't want his agenda. Mm -hmm. I mean, th this is how stupid this is. This is like if I went to the bluest part of Washington, the state, and was like, guys, you got to vote for my friend here because you know why? Trump loves this guy. I mean, he and <laughs> Trump are like this. Mm -hmm. Like, That's that wouldn't great. appeal to people in Washington. No. That's a blue state. All levels. Stupid. Uh, Josh Moon, you know, he needs to win Stupidest Person of the Year at some point. I'll send him uh, an award right now. Yeah, well, <laughs> all right, let's, let's go ahead and move on to number two. Number two. Now, for number two, this one is kind of a conglomerate, but... Uh, it, it was a really good daily dose of stupid, and there was just so many examples of it that I had to keep issuing like one after another after another and just kind of rapid oh, yeah. fire them. It was the media and their coverage of the Jacob Blake protest that happened in <laughs> Kenosha. So it was multifaceted, right? Because the the first part was they completely botched the story. Yeah. The story was that Jacob Blake was doing nothing wrong and was just like basically out for a walk doing nothing. And then a army of police officers descended upon him, started yelling racial epithets at him and just started shooting him for no reason. Like that's oh, basically yeah. yep. based on how the media covered it, what you would think would have happened. Yeah. And then when you saw the video, you saw that none of that happened. Mm -hmm. The guy was a already convicted rapist who had just come from his victim's house mm -hmm. and then reaching into a vehicle where he had a gun on the floorboard. Mm -hmm. Like, literally everything about that wrong. And then, to add insult to injury, these protests came completely unjustified, and riots would be justified no matter what, but even the protests were unjustified. Mm -hmm. And then the media completely screwed up the coverage of that, too. I remember the CNN Chiron with the reporter standing in front of, like, a, 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 a car lot... With all the cars on fire behind him and CNN literally put on the car on mostly peaceful <laughs> protest. It was so stupid. I'm like, who are you kidding? It's like, that, folks, is fake news. That is the definition of fake news right there. Right. You're literally saying that the opposite of what I'm seeing with my own two eyeballs. <laughs> totally not what you're seeing. Yeah, I mean, it would have been better for CNN That's to have just part. not run that video than to have run it and then put the... I don't know. It's just... It was a great example of what I was talking about in the airing of grievances, them just trying to straight up tell me that I'm not seeing what I'm seeing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh yeah. You know, maybe they should have just shot footage in front of a graveyard. That would have been a nice, mostly peaceful protest for them to <laughs> film. I don't Democrats know. Democrats coming together to talk about their grievances. Graveyard. Yeah. But anyway, so that's... We could go all night about just that, but that Daily Dose of Stupid, man, I, I just... there it was, was all levels. There was so much stupid, it, it would it took forever for me to cram all the footage into mm -hmm. that one little segment. Oh, yeah. But anyway, let's go on to our big one of the night, number one. And number one. Number one, the stupidest daily dose of stupid all year long 
and I think that Laura is especially going to like this one because she's an attorney as well. The lawyer in the Ahmed Aubrey case. Oh. So you remember Ahmed Aubrey that you remember that video that came out of Ahmed Aubrey and um, he was just presumably just jogging along and then uh, three random guys in a truck come up behind him and just shoot him for no reason. Well, here's the thing that we learned in the course of all that. That video was not originally public information. You know who released it? The defense attorney for the guys that shot him at Aubrey because he thought the video would help his client's case. Wow. <laughs> I mean, maybe it helped his case in the sense that, like, okay, these guys aren't racist. They're just vigilantes, so we'll give points there-ish. It still shows but, them murdering the no, guy. No, <laughs> I mean, clearly, it's not like, okay, as a lawyer, your job is to protect your client in the court of law, not in the court of public opinion. I don't care about that. That's your problem, not Right, mine. but this screwed them over in both ways. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm like, y'all are just... You do not pick the court of go court opinion over the court of law in either way. Just, just stop. Just no. Yeah, I, I think, you know, from, from an attorney's perspective, the only thing I could think that is plausibly within the realm of reason for why he would release this is that, uh, you know, the guy pulled the gun on, you know, uh, poor Mr. Arbery, and then, you know, he grabbed it and started fighting back. And so the lawyer might have been thinking, well, you see, you know, he was actually the one that reached out and grabbed the gun. Now, granted, if for whatever reason I've got a gun on somebody and they, you know, try to pull it away from me, I'm going to think it's a life or death conflict. The problem is they had no freaking right to stop him in the first place. If I'm jogging down the street and three guys, you know, like one truck behind me, one in front, and a couple guys, you know, pull a gun on me, you know what? I'm going to think they're out to kill me, and I'm going to fight back. And that use of force yeah. is justified. So you're right. That dude blew up his client's case, both in the court of public Stupid. opinion and the court of law. That was some of the worst lawyering I've ever seen in my life. Awful. I, now, Laura, Matt, you both know, I'm not an attorney. You don't want me as your not defense attorney. attorney. Uh, right, I, but even you went and pulled something that's But stupid. I'm not dumb enough to show the video no. <laughs> of, yeah. of my client murdering somebody on tape. Exactly. All levels of idiotic. Yeah. Now, is this the most impactful Daily Dose of Stupid? No, it's, it's not like, you know, something the president does as, as far as a policy that affects all of us or something like that. But, but it's, pretty it's, it's the dumbest out of everything that we could come up with. This is definitely the dumbest Daily Dose of Stupid mm -hmm. all year. Um, yep. <laughs> all right, so there's only one thing left to do in our big annual Dose of Stupid, and that is to name the stupidest person of the year. Oh, yeah. Uh -oh. So... Our stupidest person it's of the year. It's not me this year. No, it's not. It's never been you. Is it me? No, we've had some heavy hitters, okay. though. We've had some really big people be our, our daily dose of stupid. AOC, uh, she <laughs> was champion two years running. And, yeah, yeah. And it was the hard that, this year getting out of from her. It was hard. And she actually did place very high. I think she was yeah. like fourth or fifth. So oh, she, yeah. you know, not as vocal as she normally is, but she placed pretty high this year. Um, my most recent one that I know Laura liked was the uh, Tax the Rich t shirt that cost. 58 bucks. I was That's so right. stupid. <laughs> but, um, oh, anyway, gosh. so there's been some heavy hitters, very prestigious award, and the way that we do this is if you are featured in a Daily Dose of Stupid, that's one point, and so we just count up whoever had the most appearances in a Daily Dose of Stupid. Well, this year it was kind of difficult because what we wound up having happen is a tie. It was tied between Joseph Robinette Biden oh, yep. and Chris Cuomo. But the problem is, his brother, Andrew Cuomo, also had three appearances by himself, and some of them were together, and so we kind of just wound up figuring that the best way to break the tie would be to feature Andrew Cuomo and Chris Cuomo together. So, congratulations to the Cuomo brothers, who now share stupidest person of the year. Well done, guys. <laughs> they deserve it. You did. More than absolutely. anyone I can think of. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, you ever watch um, Stu Does America? It's one of the Blaze shows. No. So I'm going to do a little free promo because I like Stu's show and he, he does a good job. Um, he, he has a store and he's actually been selling shirts that they're like couple shirts. Mm -hmm. And one says, Andrew Cuomo is awful. And the other one says, Chris Cuomo is worse. <laughs> I want, I want those shirts. That's hilarious. <laughs> you two should get that. Uh, we that. We'd wear that, though. Yep. Right. Yeah. I, could, I could see y'all doing that. Um, and <laughs> we take pictures any, of that. But anyway, yeah, the Cuomo brothers have just been the worst. Did you guys see either of their, like, uh, their little news conferences that they did together as brothers on the air? I saw the one where, like, 
uh, what was it, Chris Cuomo was making fun of Andrew Cuomo, or no, it was Andrew Cuomo, anyway, one of them was making fun of the other for like a big nostril. Yeah, something like that. The COVID test, it was stupid. Oh, it was so... I like to mess with my brother too, but that was stupid. Yeah, but you don't do it on national TV, and you you also don't think your goofy like inside family jokes are going to entertain people on a national nobody, stage. Nobody, nobody. Yeah, but but don't, don't worry, guys. Completely objective journalist Chris Cuomo and completely objective news outlet CNN doesn't mind having a nightly segment with him interviewing his brother, the governor of New York. Oh yeah, no, never mind. No bias going on there whatsoever. Nope. Mm-hmm. <laughs> A recent survey showed that the average American spends, I kid you not, eight seconds reading a news story before either commenting on it or sharing it. That means that most people are barely finishing the headline before spouting out an opinion on content they didn't actually watch or read. Therefore, if you are watching this and made it to the end of this video, congratulations. You are, as Bernie Sanders would say, the 1%. So now it's totally appropriate to like and subscribe.